Hello, this is a spiritual third video to McChung's custom motion builder facial rig series. He's been bogged down with work, I guess, and since I discovered the missing link of the original tutorial with the assist by Bujinkan02 on the Autodesk forums, I figured I would take a shot at a quick tutorial and hopefully it'll be enough for you to apply to any rig. In an earlier video of McChung, he had us give our face rig controllers degree of freedom limitations. They could have been anything and they were only based on how big your framing squares were, and I mean rectangles. Uh, all you have to do is note what number you use for your degree of freedom. My setup uses a degree of freedom of 9 for both X and Y. Uh, well, for this one it's only Y, but for my, my main square it's for X and Y. And uh, all this just means is I can move positive X 9 degrees, I can move negative X 9 degrees, and same for up and down, 9 and 9. So basically this setup just assumes that you're, you have your zero coordinate in the center of your framed box. And that's just important for some of the math that our constraint's going to do a little later on. Bear with me and I'm certain you can customize it to yours when you're done. So first thing that we want to do, we want to go into our asset browser and then we want to select constraints in relation. Let's go ahead and drag five in here. Alright, so we have five. I'm going to go ahead and also rename them. I'm going to have my first one be called Face Control. This one will be Face CTRL plus Y. This one will be Face Control minus Y. The naming does not matter. This is just, it's easy for me to comprehend what I'm doing. Uh, with the setup that I'm proposing. And if it works, awesome. If not, you can always do it uh, completely from scratch. So now we have them named. Basically, this relation constraint will be for any positive Y movement. The negative Y will be for any downward Y movement. The positive X will be for uh, anything going to the right. Negative X will be for movement to the left and we'll set that up in a little bit. So let's jump right in. We're going to go ahead and select face control plus Y and we're going to go ahead and start adding pieces to our relations and what we're doing is making shortcuts and uh, you'll see what I mean here in a second. We're going to go ahead and add the following into this grid space. You want to start with the macro tools. We're going to add macro input vector and then we're also going to add macro output number. It doesn't have to make sense yet. That's quite okay. We're done with macro. Next we're going to go to converters and we're going to add vector to number. And that's going to go next. Next we're going to go to number and we're going to be pulling three different things out of here. We want to pull max pass through. That's coming up next. That's a big one. After that, we want to pull out a divide. And then finally, we're going to add an absolute. Placement is not drastically important, but this is essentially how it's going to flow. So now, next thing we're going to do is go ahead and just link everything that we're going to link. So. I'm going to go ahead and link this one by, you just click the arrow once and it highlights blue and it'll hold until you click another one or deselect by clicking the first arrow again. So just like that, I've linked the input vector to my vector to number. This is our Y control, so I'm going to select the Y number and then select that. And then it, since I know I'm not going to use the X or what Z, I could right click and hit hide unconnected. I'm going to hold off on that for right now. Uh, <clears throat> next we're going to connect the result to number A and the result to the absolute and then that result to the output number. So what we're saying is the input vector goes into the vector to number, we get the Y value, we pass it through a maximum pass through, then we divide it by a number, then we get the absolute value in case it comes out negative and then we have the output number. 
I'm sure that doesn't make a lot of sense yet. Next we need to add our default values that we know are going to be a constant. We want to go to the max pass through. We're going to right click our second arrow and select set value. And we're just going to leave it as zero. And that means it's a constant. And then what we can do is click on the max pass through. We could hide unconnected and it'll shrink the box so it's not this giant mess of garbage. And then next we also have the divide, which I'm going to bring this down a little bit because we're going to also set a value. If you remember me talking earlier, my degree of freedom is 9. Just imagine that I had the absolute value of that number. So if it's negative 9, the absolute value would just be 9. It's 9. But to save on an additional step, I'm going to go ahead and move the decimal place to the left twice. So instead of 9.00, for example, it would now be 0.09. So now I'm dividing the object's position, the Y position to be specific, by 0.09. And that's going to give me basically a percentage, which is good because our character faces, they use a value between 0 and 100, which is a lot like a percent. And it returns the absolute value. So here, this Y positive plus Y is good to go. I'm going to go ahead and select everything and then do hold control and press C or copy it essentially. Then I'm going to go to negative Y and paste. It pastes everything in. But now that we're going below zero, or at least our object is going to go below zero, I'm going to change the max pass through. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one. Then we're going to come back in to number. Now I'm going to grab a max pass through. Same thing, connecting Y to number 1, and then I'm setting a value of 0 for number 2, and then I'm linking it to divide. Then I can hide unconnected. Everything else is the same. The reason why we do these max pass-throughs, particularly for anything that can go below and above 0, is because typically my well, at least in my case. In my case, my character face has a separate expression state for the eyebrow being down and a separate one for the eyebrow being up. I don't just have it maxed out in one position or the other. So I have to kind of know when to stop processing negative Ys and only do positive Y. Sorry if that doesn't make a ton of sense. Just remember your max pass-through and minimum pass-through. It's not a big deal. So now we're going to go to the positive x and we're going to paste again. Um, this time we do want the max pass through still, but this time we want to disconnect our y and replace it with the x. Everything else is the same. Now we go to negative x, we paste again. This time we need to switch that from max to minimum again. Link the x to there, link the result to the divide, set a value of 0, hide unconnected. We have finished our macros. Next we're going to go ahead and click on face control. It is empty. I'm going to go ahead and set this back to 0. And I'm going to go ahead and select my helpers. I'm only doing 3 because this is just for a quick example. I'm going to alt click and send all 3 into here as senders. Go ahead and move them up a bit. Uh, first thing I want to do with this is select them all and right click and choose local transformations. The next thing we want to do is bring in our character face, but you're going to notice if we try dragging it in, there's nothing there. We can't connect this to anything on that, and we can't even decide if it's a sender or a receiver. So we're just going to delete it, and then we're going to go into our character face. The problem, and this is where the assist uh, by Bujin Kano 2 came into play for me, is that you need to key everything at least once. And now if we come back to face control and drag and drop, oh, now I can set it as a receiver. There's all my shapes. These are everything that I'm going to link between those. Uh, so now the goal is to get my controller objects to control the correct expression. So our next step 
is adding in our macros. You'll notice that the relation constraints that we made over here, they appear as macros, and that's why we had to make them as separate relations constraints. Any relation constraint can be a macro, but it's only really going to work if you use the macro tool where you set something as an input and an output. So first thing we can do, let's just go ahead and pay attention to my right brow. Actually, I take it back. We're going to do both brows because that's at the top. And it's I only have to worry about two, so that's easy enough. Now I'm dealing with up and down, which as we remember is my Y. So I'm going to pull in my Y positive and my Y negative. All I have to do is drag the position to there, and then my plus y, that's my up, and my negative y is my down. That is active, so now if I go ahead and start moving both brows, we have a little bit of movement, although my down is not working. If something's not working, you can update. So let's go through here. Uh, it's because it looks like I never switched my maximum pass-through for a minimum pass-through. Not a major issue. Let's just delete that. And then we're going to go down here to minimum pass-through. I bet I just did the same one. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Y to there. Set value to zero. Link to that. Hide unconnected. Back to face control. It should automatically update. Yep. But that was a good lesson. It's showing that you can edit the macro after the fact. So I'm going to pretend, now that I've already admitted it was a failure, that I did that on purpose. That's that's step one. Now let's do something a little more complicated. We'll do the left brow, just to try and keep things somewhat in line. This time, I'm going to go ahead and add my plus y up top, my negative y, or sorry, my negative x, my positive x, then my negative y. I'm going to link all of the translations to my macros. Now I need basically my left brow up goes there, my left brow left because negative x goes left, positive x goes right, negative y goes down, where are you at? There you are. Now let's do it all again. We're going to do, just dump them all in here. Link all my translation to my input. Positive y goes to up. Negative y goes to left. Positive x goes to right. Negative y goes to down. And just like that, everything is connected to my shapes. And I can now freely animate my facial expressions as I want. Hopefully that was not too insanely complicated. Uh, like I said, if you had to do a special case, like let's just pretend, let's pretend that my down wasn't working out. I had to do something else for my down. You would just do the same thing that you did for your uh, for your macro, but you would just lay it all out in here. This is the Y, so now that Y is going to go into a divide. Nope, it's going to go into a minimum pass-through. Set that value to zero. Now it's going to go to a divide. Bam, I can hide that because space in this main relation constraint 
is uh, it's rough. And let's see, divide by 0 0.09, bring in the absolute value, and then link that to down. Oops. And that should give me the exact same result for which I was at. That was the right brow. Still works. But the macro just means you don't have to do that for every little thing. As long as your expressions are set up the same, your control boxes are set up the same. Try to keep things uniform and it's going to be pretty nice. Let me go ahead and re-add my macro. There's a negative Y. Bam. Bam. Done. Still works. I like to have it so that the eyebrows tilt inward in the same way that I move my, uh, my helpers inward. So if I move them both out, you'll get the surprised look on his face. If I move the, the, the helpers inward, you'll get the angry look. And if I want to just kind of do both, I can do both. Hello. So I hope that helps, and I hope that does justice to the first two tutorials. Uh, hopefully it helps you guys out. If you guys have any more questions, I am certainly willing to try and help out. Uh, drop a comment if you need to. That's awesome. Good luck on your projects, and thanks for watching.